First of all, I want to thank God for this moment. What I believe is going on in this generation is a war between two systems of thought. One system being the, that we're made in God's image and that life has sanctity, we have human rights, and as such, it's God's purview how many of us live on the planet, how long we live, if we live free. The other system of thought, which could be rooted in Darwin's uh, survival of the fittest or eugenics, it probably started with the serpent in the Garden of Eden, but that system of thought believes that there is a hierarchy in humanity, that some people are better than others, and inevitably that reverts to three types of uh, categories of people. One is the, the super superman, like Kant would say, the ubermensch, then there's the human, the mensch, and the untermensch, the subhuman. Now, if that sounds familiar, that's because around 80 years ago, the Nazi ideology was built upon that type of system. The Nazis believed that they were descendants of Aryan gods. They believed that the Anglo-Saxons should be enslaved and serve them, and the subhumans, which I belong to, slobs, the handicapped, political prisoners and so on, gypsies, they were meant to be thrown into ovens and become dust. Now, that ideology did not go away. It's just resurfaced now, but it's not anti-Semitic. It's completely rooted in something else. The elite, so to speak, they think they're evolved. I, I think they're devolved. What they believe is that because of their wealth, power, intellectual uh, superiority, so they think, that that gives them the right to decide how many of us should be on the planet, how long we should live, who should be free, and so on. And so if you notice, any totalitarian dictatorship, the first thing they try to do is get rid of houses of worship. And it's very simple. Why? Because if I bow down to God, I'm not going to bow down to them. And so what's happening, the mechanism that they're using is fear. There's a global mass psychosis where these depraved animals, what they've done is use the media and created a false narrative that has led us to be living in chronic anxiety and fear and human isolation. If anyone studied psychological warfare, you'll know that those two points, anxiety and human isolation, will cause most people to decompensate psychologically and become very vulnerable and gullible and easy to manipulate. And then they offered the false golden calf of this, so to speak, as a false promise. And people gravitate towards it as a short-term measure to relieve their anxiety. It's not intellectual. It's purely emotional. And if you challenge someone, even the most intellectual people, but who have fallen into, into this trap, if you challenge them, they become belligerent because what you're really doing is bringing them back into that anxiety state that they so deathly don't want to be in. So the, the reality here is I'm a big fan of King David and his Psalms, and he gives a very good prescription for life. He says, turn away from bad, do good, and live. You know, we live, we thought we used to live in freedom, and you know, freedom isn't free. We were free, or we thought we were free, because of the sacrifices of the previous generations. The question is, will our children be free? And the answer depends, are we willing to sacrifice? This is our storming the beaches of Normandy moment. This generation has been tasked with, with the ability and the responsibility of looking at the primordial serpent right in the eye and saying no and decapitating it. And the only reason why this has happened is because we're letting it happen. Because there's many more of us than them. And the tactic of the enemy is to scare us and divide us. And when we're divided, that's when they could pounce at us in sections. And the, the answer, the solution to that is to rise up in hopefully nonviolent civil disobedience, reject all tyranny, reject the dictates of the demented puppet in the White House, and realize that we are fighting a well-entrenched enemy that has a head start However, we have something they don't have, which is called the God Scaler.
This is a David versus Goliath situation. And we are the David. Collective humanity of God consciousness. The enemy wants to destroy God consciousness. We have to go in the opposite direction. We need to instill into our children basic morality. And what I mean by that is we should take our children out of public schools. For many years, the public school system has attempted to destroy the souls of our children by teaching them depravity, normalizing depravity. Many of you know that there were two cities in the Bible that were destroyed, Saddam and Gomorrah. And the question is asked, why were they destroyed? So one answer is because they were immoral, but that, that's not the answer, because every place was immoral. What was so unique about them? So that one of the answers is they, they normalized immorality. They made it the law of the land. And that is a way of saying, God, we don't want you here. We reject you. And so we need to go in the completely opposite direction. We take our children out of the spiritual danger that they're in in the public school system, and now the physical danger. According to the World Homicide Organization, they issued a, a decree that if your children are in school, that's implied informed consent, meaning that you could have prevented your children from going to school. The fact that you didn't and they're in school means that you are giving consent. So now they're attacking not only the souls, but the bodies of our children. You know, in decent societies, parents sacrifice themselves for the well-being of their children. This is a biblical war. This is a war that goes from the very beginning of creation itself. But we could reject it. We could say no. We can turn to God. And here's my advice. Creation is dynamic. It's every instant of time is an act of recreation. What that means is you're not alone. That means God is making you. And if he's making you, he's with you. So we know that anxiety, fear, only lives in the psychological and emotional space where the consciousness of God is absent. If you fill that void with God consciousness, by the way, it's hard work. To be mindful of the divine constantly is hard work. But so what? This is what's necessary in order to withstand this onslaught on the human soul, on the collective human soul, on the collective human goodness and the fact that we made in his image. So my blessing to, to the whole world, to all decent people, is rise up. This hill is worth dying on. It's time for us, this generation, to pay the price so that our children could live with God consciousness, with freedom, and be able to thrive. And whether or not that will happen is directly correlated to what we do now, today. And so it is my sincere prayer and hope that like-minded, God-consciousness and people should collate together into cities of refuge of decency and even though the majority of the world are continents of tyranny, I know that, but nevertheless, a little light pushes away a lot of darkness. We all come from the same source. My, my four-year-old daughter one time told me, Daddy, you're my brother. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, God is my father and he's your father. So we're all brothers and sisters and we all are made in the image of God. We all are given the gift of consciousness, gift of free choice, and we should all use that gift in the right way by choosing to put on the yoke of heaven and take the yoke of our own fears and the yoke of other people's evil agendas off of us. Because there's only one type of free person in the world, that's someone who chooses to be a servant of God.